Hi everyone, it's Dan here, and I'm back again to talk about spirits, citrus, and all things bar. But today, I'm not alone. The other guys wanted to pitch in and tell you about their favourite gins. Side note, we do all drink other things other than gin, you know, lagers, ciders, mixed drinks, obviously you know I like cocktails and all that stuff. Um, the eagle-eyed viewers among you in the last one I did might have spotted the bottle of Midori on my bar. I think there's even a bottle of sake tucked in the back somewhere. But, with all of us, gin is the common favourite, so we figured we'd do one that all of us can contribute to equally, because we all drink gin. So, without further ado, take it away. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Um, so in particular, um, we just want to talk about some of our favorite gins. Uh, and I've got three favorites lined up, um, which I particularly like. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about them. Um, so first up, um, and probably the easiest um, to get hold of is, is Roku Gin, which is uh, made by Suntory, I think. Um, so it's quite widely available. Uh, Roku is Japanese for six and it has six botanicals. Um, and it fits with the style of gin I like, which is quite floral, quite fragrant, quite herby, quite you know, strong botanicals, rather than the more kind of sort of what I call plain um, London dry style. Um, not that, you know, I don't like London Dry, but I prefer something with a bit more flavour, a bit more interest. And this certainly has, it's got, it really stands out in terms of its kind of flavour and botanicals are, are really nice and strong, which is what I like. Um, so that's one of my favourites. It also comes in a very nice sort of hexagonal, hexagonal, hexagonal bottle uh, with these lovely relief flower designs on it. Um, so for a, and it is classed as a craft gin, um, but for a, a readily available gin that's easy to get in most supermarkets um it's pretty good pretty impressive packaging great taste so yeah i like it i mean i know the packaging isn't critical but it you know if the gin stands up to the packaging the packaging is good so much the better um so that's probably a regular favorite of mine um the other one i've had recently um is um Cotswold dry gin um and i was pretty impressed with this because it had a very kind of again it's quite herbal very heathery taste and i really enjoyed that so it wasn't quite as fragrant as the roku but it was had a really nice taste lovely taste to it um so really enjoyed that um again it's not so widely available um, in supermarkets but you know it's worth getting hold of um and the most recent one is um which has probably got the best packaging of all I mean, the cotswold packaging is very smart i like it and it comes in a very nice box you know it's very kind of serious packaging um so the last one which is the most recent again beautifully packaged is this tarquin's gin which is um they're based in cornwall um and it comes with this lovely um wax seal on the top uh there's a very nice sand nice sandblasted glass um bottle with this relief design on it um and it's a, a dry gin um but it's as a dry gin it's got a really nice taste a really lovely kind of again it's quite fragrant taste to it and really enjoyed that um so it's it, the gin actually measured up the packaging so um those are some of my favorites let's hear from the other guys uh, it's just, just about me so we we like i say we all like gin and we're all going to do a little bit of short on our favorites so that's it from me i'll hand you off to someone else Greetings, just enjoying some fine gin out of my heart face emoji mason jar. I have also suited up because I wanted to show that phase drug media we can also do classy. And I think now is about the time to cue this sort of stylish lounge or jazz music to really showcase just how classy we here at phase drive really are. <laughs> So my name is Sam, if you don't already know, and I'm going to go through my three personal favourite gins that I like to kind of enjoy on a regular basis. So in at number three is Bombay Bramble. Now this is a gin I only really discovered this past summer. I actually went to visit Dan and uh, he had some in his little bar and uh, I drank uh, a lot of it, so I probably owe him a bottle. It's infused with blackberry and raspberry and there's a lot of nice flavour. I always tend to find myself drawn to sort of berry flavoured gin and sort of more fruit infused gin rather than the kind of straight up and drier gins. I quite enjoyed having this one with a fairly neutral tonic so either Indian or Mediterranean fever tree, always got to be fever tree tonic. And yes, I, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that one. It, uh, it did the job and to be honest I wish I had some with me right now. 
In at number two is Gordon's Pink Gin. Now, Gordon's kind of gets dismissed a lot for being, you know, if there's plenty of better gins out there, it's a fairly sort of run-of-the-mill gin. But I gotta say, their premium pink distilled gin is very, very nice. Again, there's a lot of flavor that just comes from the gin, so you actually don't really need anything too flavored when it comes to the tonic. I do sometimes have this with a slice of lemon, although being that it's less citrusy, actually I find a slice of strawberry or maybe a couple of raspberries in it kind of tends to pair better. Although, you know, I tend to have lemons with everything. There's way too many lemons in this thing, so, you know. And in at number one, my personal favorite, the one I always go for is Brecken Botanicals Gin. Now the botanicals in this are subtle, but there's enough in there that you can kind of get a bit of an aftertaste when you have it. Now I like to pair it with elderflower tonic. I think it brings out the flavors really, really nicely. And it's just a really good high quality gin. It's also probably the most refreshing out of all of them. If I really want like a nice refreshing gin, I always go Brecken Botanical. And again, plenty of slices of lemon and uh, lots of ice and always if this is around I will have my heart face emoji mason jar. Mm. Delicious. So there we go those are my personal three picks for gins. If you ever need to know what to get me for my birthday if it's not steak or a bunch of blu-rays get me Brecken Botanical I'll be very happy. So my turn. So first on the list for me and top of the pile by a bloody mile is Chase Farms Grapefruit Gin. I first had this in the Sun Bar in Northampton and it blew me away with how powerful and just awesomely grapefruity it was. Now if you don't like grapefruit, this probably isn't gonna be your sort of thing, but I wasn't a massive grapefruit fiend before I tried it either, so who knows, maybe it'll turn you. The only downside I would say is it is quite expensive. You can get slightly smaller bottles at about half the price of this sort of size. Um, but they're still quite expensive and they're not super easy to find. They're, they're common enough in most supermarkets, but it's not like you, you know, your tankeries you can find literally everywhere. This this is a little little bit sort of hidden away, but once you find a place that sells it, it's not hard to get hold of. But yeah, if you haven't tried it yet and you you know don't mind the grapefruit flavour or you really like grapefruit, give this a go. Bonkers, change your life. <laughs> oh, even there, it doesn't taste like alcohol. Doesn't taste. Doesn't smell like alcohol. It just smells like grapefruits in a bottle. Mm. Oh man. Second up on the list, and this will be no surprise to anyone who knows me or has watched the last video. Second on my list, Martin Miller's clean, beautiful, awesome gin. Now I first tried this uh, in a like sample set Neil got me for Christmas, you know, in a bottle about this big. It didn't taste like any clean gin I'd had before. Um, I was very used to Tankery and Number 10 um, and Gordon's. They all kind of, you know, have that same London dry style to them. So the thing about this is it is, um, blended with Icelandic water, which is obviously where it gets that sort of really nice filtered sort of taste from. It also has a really cool bottle, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it has like a, um, a sticker on the back here with Iceland and England kind of mapped out. I just really like that, I've always really liked the design of it since I first saw the little mini bottle I had in the samples that I got. It's just good man. Uh, it's pretty cheap as far as Jingo, that's fairly standard price and it's also pretty common now, which is good, so you can, you can get this almost anywhere for a decent amount of money, so. So I was looking over my bar top thinking, which, which, what do I want to fill the third spot on my list? Um, and then this caught my eye at the back of the bar. It's been sat there for ages because I haven't quite finished it off yet. But, Gordon's Pink. <laughs> As you can see, quite a well-used bottle. So Gordon's Pink to me, um, it's the first pink gin I think I ever tried and I just thought it was really nice. I, it sort of stopped me on the trail of pink gin and other flavored gins. Um, but the main thing for me is this, to me, tastes like summer in a bottle. Uh, I remember drinking this because every every lunchtime in the summer I'd have a single um, shot of this in a G&T in the sun. And it was just great and it, it just, it has summer written all over it for me. It smells like it, it looks like it, it tastes like it. <laughs> uh, so it's more of a nostalgic gin for me I think this one, which is why my number three spot. Uh, likewise, Gordon's pretty common, you can find it anywhere, and they're doing lots of interesting flavours now that I haven't tried, but Gordon's, easy to find, not that expensive. If you want a good pink gin and in a massive bottle like this, sorry. But that'll do it for this video. Again, a little bit different from what we usually do, but we said we'd bring you new things in season three, and we hope you're enjoying some of the newer content, looking at slightly different perspectives and different interests. So, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. You know the drill by now, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.
Side note, we do drink other stuff as well. Ligers, Ligers, Ciders. Gin, that's kind of one I always, that one's I always, ugh. But that'll do it for this video. Again, a little bit different from what we usually do. Don't want to put the ceiling. Uh, I don't know how to sign this off, so.